Simon from Sonic Shocks and I'm here today with Matt from Hatebreed. How you doing sir? Alright, doing pretty good. Cool. Um, last time we saw you in the UK was back in February on the Machine Head Tour. Yep. What have you guys been up to since? Um, well, this past summer we did the uh, Rockstar Mayhem Tour, Rockstar Energy Drink Mayhem Tour in the US, which is a summer tour that goes around uh, kind of like uh, the OzFest that we've done in previous years. Big summer tour in the U.S., uh, a lot of great bands on it, Lamb of God, Rob Zombie, um, Chimera, Shadows Fall. So we did that uh, over the summer, and then we uh, were here now doing our two-week run of the U.K., and after this we'll uh, go home for the holidays, and then we have our annual Stillborn Fest, which is four shows around the northeast of the United States. Um, we'll do that, and then we cap off the year. So it's been a pretty busy year for you guys this year. Yeah, yeah, we've been pretty busy with touring and uh, you know random shows here and there. What's your highlight of 2010 been so far? Um, there's been a lot. I would say that Machine Head tour was great over here for us. We played a, a lot of cities, especially around the UK, that we haven't been to in a while. Um, this tour is kind of like a follow-up to that to hit those cities, you know, to come back on our own and play longer and more songs and everything. Uh, so the Machine Head tour was was great, and I'd say the Mayhem tour. I love doing summer tours like that, uh, big festival type tours. You know, it's uh, a lot of you have a lot of friends in other bands that are on the tour as well, and it's just kind of like heavy metal summer camp, you know. And this is sort of like the first <coughs> series of tours that you've done extensively for the Hatebreed album, and it's a lot of um, first pe first impressions for people of that album. How has the um, album been going down live? Uh, good. We usually do about four songs from it, um, two to four songs. We usually, we've been opening our set with the newer stuff. So the response is great. They're singing right along. Uh, they know the words. They know the music. So I would say that that's good. They, they, they like the record. They like the songs. So people haven't been turning on it then, which is uh, sometimes something that happens with new music. No, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, not everyone is going to be completely happy. Um, it's newer material. It's, it's, uh, it's more metal than the stuff we've done previously, like we kind of we kind of uh, did some different stuff than we typically would on our previous album, so some people will love it, some people will hate it, you take the good with the bad, um, you know, we like the songs, that's the most important thing, so um, yeah, we continue to play them live. And now that the album's been out just over a year, how do you feel yourselves looking back and listening to the album, have you had a chance to listen to it, kind of digest it since it's been released? I've listened to it a couple of times. I mean, it's not something I listen to every day. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of look back on all our records like that. Every once in a while, I'll blow the dust off it at, off the shelf, you know, and then pop it in and just listen to it again. So, you know, not listening to it for a while, I, I, I kind of hear things that I didn't hear before and stuff like that, you know. Um, so it's different, but I mean, I don't listen to our stuff all the time. So I play it every night. So. Yeah. So it's not one of those things that you kind of want kind of to live with all the time. Right, right. Um, and one of the things that I found always found interesting with Hatebreed is that you guys aren't a typical hardcore band, but you're not a typical metal band. You're one of the bands that mixes both the genres together. Yeah. Do you ever feel like you encounter hostility from either party, you know, elitist metal kids or elitist hardcore kids? Um, maybe a little bit, yeah. I think that the hardcore scene is very loyal to that music, you know, and... Uh, um, they embrace some metal, but it seems like you know, like if, if we, if the more metal we get, the kind of we're not being turned on, but you know, you, you hear some things here and there, like oh, they went more metal this time, and you know, the hardcore scene may not be as happy with that, but um, the metal kids seem to embrace it more. Um, you know, I don't know. It's not like there's a massive revolt against us trying new stuff, but. You know, like I said before, sometimes you get the fans who are ecstatic about it, and some some fans are more open to it, and then there's the others who just are not as into it, and who would like you to go back to uh, doing the songs that, you know, kind of the style of music that we did on the demos way back in, like, 95 or something like that, you know, so um, you take the good with the bad. And on the flip side, you're uh, not a band that sells millions and millions of albums, but you have a really hardcore, dedicated fan base. Is it? Would you say it's your fan base that keeps you going, that keeps you as a band together year after year, making more albums? Oh yeah, definitely. We're a touring band. We tour for our fans. Um, we're a live band. You know, we're not a band that uh, is played on the radio every hour. You know, we're faster, extreme, heavy music. So. Um, 
our fans make us, whether they be hardcore fans, whether they be metal fans, whether they be in between, you know. Um, we embrace all of them, all, all of those types of fans. So, uh, yeah, we're a live band, man. That, that's, our fans make us. Uh, they're loyal to us, we're loyal back to them. I think that's one of the things that people appreciate with you guys is that you're always honest with people as well. You always take, you know, you stand here and you go, we are hate breed, whether you like it or not, and you don't try and bullshit people, which I think exactly. is, is another big thing for people. Yeah, we're not one of those bands that kind of changes with the tides, you know. We've, uh, all, we may try some new things here or there, you know, album to album, but at the end of the day, you know, you're still getting a hate breed record, you know, it's not like all of a sudden we're singing or all of a sudden we're rapping or something or all of a sudden there's, uh, you know, acoustic guitar or something like when you hear hate breed, you know, it's going to be loud and brutal and fast and aggressive. Um, you know, everybody knows that our fans know that we're not going to cheat them out of anything like that. And as a band that has consistently had to work for everything that they've achieved and still consistently worked hard, how do you feel when you see people like bands that win competitions to end up on big festivals? Or how do you feel about things like reality TV shows like uh, American Idol and things like that? Seeing people get fame in an instant when you know you've had to work so hard to get where you are. Well, I mean, yeah, it's shitty, but that's kind of the day and age we're in nowadays. Uh... People want things fast and they want it now and six months from now they'll look back on whatever was happening six months before and be like, oh God, you know, that's so over with or whatever, um, you know, marketing wise or whatever, you know, the, uh, the big machine is always going after the next hot big thing, you know, let's uh, throw this nice looking girl out there and it doesn't even matter if she sings or can sing or whatever, like we'll make a quick million off her and then see you later. You know, whatever, that's the whole American Idol thing, let's make a star out of someone. Some people do have the talent, I'm not taking anything away from anyone, but um, that's just the day and age we're in, reality shows, uh, you know, people being famous for nothing, really, just for being on TV, you know. So, I mean, we're, we don't come from that anyway. We're, we've always been like a, a grassroots, started in the basement type of heavy band, you know. Um, like I said before, we're a touring band. We've always been in the van or the station wagon or the, the bus or whatever. You know, we always hit the road. We tour a lot. We're on the road like eight months out of the year. It's just our thing. It's our lifestyle. It's what we've always done. So you see, you know, Joe Schmo, who just happens to be on TV for 15 minutes and get famous. Yeah, okay, that sucks. I mean, it's hokey. It's stupid. Great. You'll forget about him in a year, you know, but uh, um, that's just the day and age we're in. People suck. <laughs> People are into that type of bullshit. I mean, whatever. You can't get mad at that. You might as well just end it all now if you're going to get mad at that because that's just how it is. Um, you don't have to like it. I don't like it. I don't follow any of it. We just kind of do our thing. We're hate breed. Like I said, people know what to expect from us. We're a touring band. We'll always be on the road seeing our fans and playing for our fans. And that's where we get our energy from. So, yeah, whatever. Fuck all that reality <laughs> shit. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to ask you as, as another member of Hatebreed, um, we know that Jamie's got a lot of things that go on outside of the band, you know, he's got his Cloven Lion record label, he does Kingdom of Sorrow, he's presented Headbangers Ball. When you guys are on a hiatus and he's doing all of his other things, how do you guys keep occupied? What do you do to keep yourselves busy? Um, I don't know, I jam with different people. Sometimes I won't play at all. It's good because we tour so much to get home and not have to play not have to know that you're going to be, oh man, what time is it? i got to be on in two hours or, you know. It's nice to take a little bit of a break for me personally. Um, I've been working on my teaching degree for a while now. Well, I've been out of school for a while, but with the breaks we have coming up uh, in the new year, I think I'm going to return to school and finish that up. Um, you know, it's, it was another thing. I always did music and I always went to school too. I always kind of <coughs> juggled the two, so I've been doing one for a while. Now I'm going to go back and complete the other one. Uh, so that'll keep me a little busy. Um, yeah, you know, whatever comes up, really. I try to practice a lot. Um, you know, after I've taken that break, I kind of at least try to keep the chops up and everything like that so I, I don't just go dormant. But um, I don't live on a, on a touring schedule when I'm at home. And what type of teaching is it that you're going into? Is it going to be music teaching or is it going to be something no. completely different? No, it's uh, special ed and elementary education. I was going for my teaching degree in that. Um, I think I'm from New York. New York State's kind of changed up their laws and regulations and whatnot since I've dropped out of school, so I think I'll have to go back and kind of catch up a little bit with the newer statutes and stuff like that, but uh, shouldn't be too hard, shouldn't be too much time. 
So that would be something that you would sort of keep busy doing if you when you get yeah. a teaching degree away from hate breed. Exactly. Yeah, I could. It's an option. It's good to have options. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is always good to have options because otherwise you find yourself stuck in one place going, oh, I've got nothing to do now. Yeah, yeah, and I try not to be bored. Uh, it's hard. And you're bored so much on tour because when you, you figure you only play an hour and a half a night and there's so many other hours in the day, like you, you scramble with things to keep you busy, you know. Um, I try not to be that way at home. I try to always be involved with something and you know, keep myself occupied. And do you guys already know what you're going to be doing in 2012 after the Christmas break? Have you got the next year? Uh, well, we're taking uh, probably the first half of the year off to just kind of do other things, just take a break, kind of go away for a little while. Um, and then we do have some shows in the works. We have some stuff planned for the second half of the year. Uh, nothing's been announced yet. Things are still in the works, so uh, we'll be popping up here and there. We're doing, doing some shows, maybe some festivals. We would love to see you back at Download Festival. Oh, that'd uh, be great. Especially yeah. after last year's performance that was recorded. Um, when we spoke to Jamie back in February, the, the DVD um, that you packaged with the, the new album mm -hmm. apparently sold a lot of records um, in America because all the guys wanted to see the girls getting their boobs out of English versions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'd, we'd like to see you back again. Um, it would be nice. So if anyone's listening out there who's booking a festival, these guys want to come back. Yeah, yeah, we hope Download's one of our favorites. Of course, I think it's a favorite for any band that's ever played it, you know. Um, it's definitely one of the bigger ones throughout uh, England and Europe as a whole, so I'd love to come back and do it again. And have you got any plans for a new album yet? Are you already thinking that way? Nope, nope. Uh, you know, there's some ideas that have been kicked around, <coughs> like from way back, or you know, some some newer stuff, but we haven't we haven't focused on anything, focused on doing anything yet. Maybe sometime this year, maybe next year. Do you think maybe that the next album will take a little bit longer to write? Because you're one of those bands that kind of releases an album, tours two years, release another album. Do you think maybe the next one will take a little bit of a longer time? Uh, it's hard to say. I'm not really sure. I don't think we'll really know how much time it's going to take until we kind of know what we want to do. And we haven't even touched on that yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this is the part of the interview where we get into the strange question territory. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> first, first random question of the interview. Um, somebody has decided that they're going to take Matt Byrne and they're going to make a time capsule of his musical career and they're going to put three songs in it. Which three songs do you pick and why? Hmm, that's a tough one. I never thought about that. Well, I guess... Uh, hmm... That's a good one. I'd have to think about that. I suppose just, uh, you know, three random songs through the hate breed career of the albums that I played on. Uh, I don't know which ones because I'm proud of all of them, but I guess I'd just pluck one off of, uh, you know, each one of our albums and, and kind of throw it in there. I'm um, just three songs. Okay, which three albums would you choose? I'd probably choose Perseverance, uh, The Rise of Brutality, and I'd probably take the newer album, the self-titled one, because uh, that's so different from the other ones. Yeah. So a little bit of variety in there. Okay, second random question. You're, you're told you're given free reign to book a tour of any band you can headline and you pick two bands to play alongside you. Which two bands would you <laughs> pick? Any two bands in the world. Any two bands. They can be bands that are functioning, they can be bands that are not functioning anymore. Uh, well, I'd take Led Zeppelin, because I'd love to just say I've seen them, let alone play with them, you know? Uh, I take them and probably uh, let's see, maybe like Tower of Power, some kind of <laughs> funk band, something like that. Maybe James Brown, something like that. Something a little funkier and different. So uh, the drummers are always great in that style of music. So <coughs> it would give me a chance every night to watch these great drummers play. And in closing, have you got a message for all of the Hatebreed fans worldwide that are going to be watching this interview? Um, I. We just appreciate, as a band, we appreciate all the loyalty that the fans have shown us throughout the years. Um, we'll continue to keep making the music that you guys love and enjoy and come out to rock to all the time throughout the world. Um, yeah, we're just very appreciative of uh, all the success we've had and we'll keep chugging right along. Cool. Thank you very much for your time. Cool. Thanks.